Hi, my name is Sophia Yen, and I'm the co-founder of Pandia Health, a new birth control startup that's happening in the Valley. And I still see a lot of gender disparity, obviously, in startups, as well as high tech, and specifically in the birth control pharmacy realm. If you look at all the other companies, they're all founded by men. And we have the first woman-led, women-founded company that is also older. I see most of the startups, like 20-somethings, we all are women, we've all had babies, we're all experienced. And so I think, in general, women come to startups after they've started their families, when they have a little more experience. We don't have the kind of gumption to say, oh, I'm totally qualified, I've never done anything before, and I know that this can succeed. But we have failed before, learned from failures, and are now ready to lead and be the next future CEOs and startups out there. But I, when I go to pitches and I look out in the audience of venture capital, two maybe out of ten are a woman. And when I pitch something like birth control, blank, glossy stares from the men. And the women are like, oh my gosh, where was this product 20 years ago? And so we need diversity in funders. We need diversity in leaders. And it's just a long way to go. From my physician side, I'm an associate professor at Stanford in the Department of Pediatrics. And I ask you to look on the internet and see how many women are chairs of pediatrics. Pediatrics is currently 95% women if you look at the residents that are coming through, but I believe there's only one chair of female pediatrics in the entire nation. And I believe that's UC Davis. Um, soon there may be one at Stanford, they're looking for someone right now, and 50% of the candidates applying I believe are women, but currently one in the entire nation. Same thing with OB-GYN. The joke is in OB-GYN, if you're a man, you can choose whatever residency you want because you're the affirmative action. And again, look around and see how many women are chairs of the department of OB-GYN. And I think part of it is that they haven't adapted their policies. Internal medicine has in that we have these um, meetings called Grand Rounds, and they're every Friday currently in pediatric at 8 a.m. Anyone with a child knows 8 a.m. is not achievable. If I go to the 8 a.m., then my husband has to stay home and deal with the children. If he goes to the 8 a.m., then I have to stay home and deal with the children. What if we're both in medicine and we're both high power? Somebody has to suffer. However, internal medicine has moved their um, grand rounds to noon because everybody should be at work at noon. But to expect someone to be there at 8 a.m. is really family unfriendly. And it's really not a pro-woman policy. It's a pro-family policy. And we really need to care about our families and think about parents and not assume that someone's going to stay at home while the other person makes the money, that we have two equal partners in every family. So we have a long way to go, and I hope all of you will help us get there. You're going to hear the same.